This week on the Stogie Geek Show, we're going to smoke the Southern Draw Rose of Sharon. Um, I was told that this is the official Kentucky Derby episode because it is Kentucky, Kentucky Derby this week. So we're drinking mint juleps and some of us have dressed, dressed up anyway. Um, and so look for costumes on, on set. And uh, we've got... Uh, Mike and Jay are here with us from from where, Joe? Because I don't have my show notes in front of me. Because both of my laptops aren't working, which is awesome. The what? Tor Billion Trailers. Tor Billion Trailers. Thank you. From Tor Billion Trailers. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so we welcome them in studio as guests, which is awesome. We're going to talk about... Uh, bourbon and maybe some rum drinks that are awesome that should be in everyone's repertoire of cocktails that they have, especially this week being Kentucky Derby week, and especially because I love these particular cocktails, mostly bourbon, one rum with the mojito, uh, with cigars, and with summertime coming up, this is you should pay attention because we're going to show you how to make all of them. Um, and then we'll do Stogies of the Week and talk about what we've been smoking. So all that and more on this episode of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from Villiger North American Studios, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Many of you don't like the Patriots, and quite frankly, uh, those of us on the show today don't really care. Uh, (laughs) Then we're going to... Joe Hollywood joins us. Welcome, Joe. How are you? He's on point. What's up, boys? It's definitely a cigar. <laughs> What's going on? We, th- yeah, we need that. Oh, need, the yeah. straw. Oh, straw. Oh, 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 it's like I'm, a classy straw. It's like wow. metal and stuff. That's there a stainless steel boy, straw. Jojo. It's, it's already bent. Don't try and bend it anymore because it's metal. You're there so you go, strong, bro. Joe. Bend that straw. Brought to you by Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, getting ready to smoke some cigars and talk shop with the illustrious crew that is in here, as well as our special guests who are in studio, all drinking Mint juleps. Joe Hollywood is to my left. Welcome, Joe. How you doing? Do you know how to make a Chromebook work? Because apparently Chromebook. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I do, actually. I've What's only been on? doing this since I was seven. I don't know. What's I going just, on? What's what? Can't it won't connect to the stupid Wi-Fi. It just keeps saying out of range. Really? Yeah. Which oh. I don't believe it. Yeah, I'm going to turn... You know what? Uh, producers in my head are telling me to turn it off and turn it back on again. They're very finicky. They, I know well, that. they can preface that with idiot, and they can follow it up. <laughs> should be able to make this technology work. Rayman's here with us. Gentlemen. What's going on, Rayman? Happy to be here. Let's you were, go. You were working recently. You just got a promotion and stuff. You're, like, living the good life. You gave me the cigar, which is awesome. Thank you to uh, you and uh, Southern Draw. It's a great cigar. Well, that remains to be seen because I haven't smoked it yet. <laughs> Me neither. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I Wait for it. I concur. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Mikey. Hold, hold on to your hats, Robert. We're going <laughs> to... He, I'm sure he's, he's going to be listening. No, and I, I liked uh, uh, many of the offerings from Southern Draw. So. Nice. Um, do, who wants to do the honors of introducing our fabulous guest? Now, is it Joe Rainman uh, had the previous relationship with our guest? Absolutely. So, uh, but wait, it was before we do months. that, let's introduce <laughs> the cigar first before we introduce our guests, okay? Gotcha. So this is, in wait, I, one of my laptops is working. Hold on. I can even read you uh, stuff about this cigar. Um, it is called the Southern Draw Rose of Sharon. Uh, which keeps the naming of its... Uh, so we'll read from the Coop website that has mm-hmm. a great description of it, of its corbelins after flowering pr- plant, even. Prant? No, plants. In the press release by the company, it says, selected the Rose of Sharon in part for its biblical expression that first appeared in the King James Bible in 1611. The Song of Solomon, <laughs> chapter 2, verse 1, I am the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley. And to celebrate the bell of Southern Draw, Sharon Holt, 
whose calming hand, tireless devotion, and personal touch have defined the culture of the Southern Draw brand. It is an Ecuadorian uh, Connecticut wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and filler from Nicaragua and the Dominican of uh, Dominican Republic. It is made in Nicaragua at Tabacalera Fernandez. It comes in a host of different sizes, Bellicosto, Robusto, Bellicoso even, Toro, Gordo, Lancero, and two different size Perfectos, one at a 58 ring gauge, one at a 56 ring gauge. I'd say we're smoking the tor, Toro, the Gordo, Toro? Tor- the, uh, yeah, the Toro. This is, this has a slight box press to it. Is this the Toro? Right. Okay. This is the, the Toro 6x52. Is that where all, all of us are smoking? Mm-hmm. All three of us are smoking yep. that? Okay, good. So that is, um, do, anything else to add, uh, Rain Man? I'm going to let you get into it and enjoy yourself, but uh, um, floral notes absolutely come to the forefront, and uh, it's a nice, nice uh, blend and mixture together. I nice. thoroughly enjoy them. Very nice. Okay, now you can introduce our guest. Thank you. I'm going to relax and have my cigar now and let you guys do the show. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jay, LaForge, Jay Forge and uh, Michael De Palma from Tor Billion Trailers, and uh, two fine gentlemen. Mike's a good buddy. We go way back, and uh, happy for uh, for their grown business. And uh, boys, want to want to comment? Thanks for that stellar intro. <laughs> <laughs> I got the goosebumps. Did you? <laughs> no, no, I caught up in my. Is he talking? Outside. I don't even know. I think so. No. <laughs> so what? You guys do like trailers, like trailer parks? Uh, no, no, not yet. No. no. Okay, <laughs> not yet. Uh, trailer so sales and, and service. Oh, so, okay. So you like yes. transport stuff? Well, uh, yes. Not transport stuff, but we, we, we sell stuff to transport stuff. I gotcha. So we, we do gotcha. horse trailers. That's the primary business. Yep. Uh, we also sell dump trailers, cargo trailers, utility trailers, uh, anything trailer related, you name it. Uh, we also service. Uh, we do snow plows, sanders. Yeah, so what does that have to do with cigars? Other than cigars are awesome? Well, today... Uh, we right. did unload a, a load of trailers, and you had a cigar. I had, I had a cigar. cigar so. yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's we good. could smoke that's on the job. I mean, that's you yeah. know. horse and cigar enthusiasts. Yeah. Perf- perfect. For we could smoke on the job. Does that count? Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> it does. That's absolutely a win. It does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's uh, that's awesome. So you guys like? Um, what's your favorite? Um, what are some of your favorite cigars to smoke? Since we're we're on the topic. This is the Stogie Geek Show. Obviously, it's not the Trailer Geek Show. There is. No. <laughs> Where's the exit? <laughs> Where's the exit? We gotta have like well. a Stogie Trailer Boys or Trailer <laughs> Park segment or something like that. Um, so uh, what? So obviously, there's an occasion to smoke a cigar like every day. Like there is. You're getting to work, waking up. Getting in your car, all good reasons to have a cigar. Sure, sure. right. Um, so when you guys light up cigars, like which which ones do you reach for most often? Actually, this show because I've been traveling is more about which cigars like are my go tos. Yep. Uh, in our review section, so I want to hear from you guys. Like, what are your go tos? Um, I prefer to box press. Uh, you know, something uh, medium to full bodied. Um, you know, I went on a Kristoff kick. Mm-hmm. When I drew a States kick, I've I've been uh, the on Don Pepin kick. Loves that blue. I love Don, the yeah. the Pepin blue original. Yep. Uh, but uh, Joe has introduced me to these Connecticut's lately, and I'm going to tell you they're enjoyable. Mm. They are. I'm a. <laughs> yep, that's a nice guy. Paul Paulson. There it is. <laughs> there it is. We start over. <laughs> the, no, uh, no, we're not no. starting over. We're, we're rolling with it. We're live. <laughs> we're, live. we're live. We're no, live. No, this is live. No, yeah, it's just you know, it's just of course unraveling on me, which is probably totally my fault, since I have been traveling a lot lately and probably not spending as much time maintaining. My humidors. Can we get some of that uh, cigar <laughs> clue or pectin? Uh, so when you on go set? on when when you go on cigar kicks, I do as well. And and this and, is a trend we've noticed. Yeah, lately. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and even in if you stay tuned to the um, st- uh, sticks of the week, I've I've continued to trend from from last week. And when you go on kicks, like what prompts you to say? You know, do, do you have do you have a bunch of humidors at home, or do you say, "Wow, I really like this. I need to try it again." Take us through your thought process as a consumer as to, you know, what prompts your kicks. For me personally, yep. I'm uh, strictly a shadow smoker. Okay. If I'm with somebody, whatever they're trying, I'm trying. Okay. Um, I like know, that because you can yeah. compare, compare notes. I mean, Mark Jr. and I would do that all the time. We'd smoke yep. the same or similar blends 
you know, maybe the same blend but in a different size yep. kind of thing. Or if we smoked Opus X, we'd go find like the oldest one we had in our humidors yep. uh, and try and compare notes. I think that's really well, and that's part of the reason why we do that on the show today uh, with other people's you know cigars that we compare notes on them. So. Well, that's I guess so everyone's cigar is someone else's cigar because we don't actually have a. I don't have my own personal cigar yet. Not yet. Maybe yeah. someday. How about you, that's Jay? That's when I know I've made it. What's your wheelhouse? Uh, well, my wheelhouse is a uh, new, uh, new world. I like I like a new world cigar. That's my everyday cigar. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'm feeling uh, lucky and ambitious, I'll have a Rocky Patel. I like Rocky Patels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. which, now, which Rocky Patel? The um, it's 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 a box cut. It's the anniversary, the twentieth anniversary, I believe. Is when I twentieth when anniversary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, like I like that, that in the Lancero. Yeah, very much. Yeah. They're harder to find in the in the Lancero. Uh -huh. Rocky Patel gets a bad name with a lot of the like core right Stogie geeks out there. Yeah. But I I just think you gotta you gotta keep smoking. Like it's one of the things on this show where people will have these like blanket statements, and they're like. I don't like Robustos, or I don't like Lanceros, or I don't like Maduros, or I don't like XYZ manufacturer's cigar. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> thank you. I need a little glue for my... I'll, I'll take care of that No in teeth. A no teeth. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, have you smoked every Robusto size cigar that's out there? Have you smoked every different Lancero or every single size and blend from a particular manufacturer? And they're like, well, no. I'm like, well, so how can you go around saying, like... I don't like that. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, Bud Light is Bud Light, right? Like, right. either you like it or you don't. Mm -hmm. But True. cigars are different. Like, everyone makes different things. And they're all different from size to wrapper to age, like, whatever. Um, so I really think you need to keep an open mind. And I hope you, you do. guys do uh, as well. Sure. Because I think that's super uh, important to getting the most enjoyment out of this, you know, right. great hobby. So. Right. Um, I like the Super Lajero from Rocky Patel. I thought that was, an, and I heard they're discontinuing that. So I've been I've been traveling, but I need to go back online and uh, go find some because the local shops don't have them anymore. Right. Uh, we need to go do some shopping. You want to see where I go shopping? I can show you where we shop. It's cool. I already know where you shop. <laughs> <laughs> You've been there. I already know. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of that, did you guys buy mostly cigars and brick and mortar online to make sure the two were what, what drives that decision? Mine's a brick and mortar. Uh, mm -hmm. I go to the store probably once or twice a week, and I I I, I visit two different cigar shops. So, so yeah, that's good. So I you keep, have your favorite shops. Yeah, yeah, I do. That's nice. Yeah, we used I mean, to we used to come here on Thursday nights. We go out with a crew of guys, been new for over thirty years, and in the winter time, you know, we always look for a place where we can sit inside, and, and we've been to Havana quite a few times in the winter. It's nice. So, yeah, I'm brick and mortar as well, and uh, I don't mind handouts. Yeah, that's hand always good. good. Yeah, that's a good, you know. Partial. Yeah, he's, he's really good at that. Yeah. 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 Well, and I, I think that's one of the things where, you know, it's different from a lot of other consumer based products. Um, it certainly has a, a, a dotted line to liquor, right? But it's not like buying a car. I mean, yeah, you take a car for a test drive, but it's not the same thing. When you sit down and you put the investment of an hour smoking a cigar and you really get into all the nuances and flavors in it. Um, so I like samples for that reason. And manufacturers, mm -hmm. what they always tell me is events do really well for them because they can hand Mike a cigar. That's right. Be like, yes. hey, try this. And you're going to know, Mike, like whether you like I'm it or not. I'm going to try it. Yeah, and you're going to try it. I am. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's what's really cool. Um, and, of course, the FDA has tried to put the kibosh on that in a lot of different ways. But I think it's a really important thing to our industry to let people That exposure factor is it. invaluable. Yeah. Yep, get it out there. You like the exposure, I know. I do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see a weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday nights, you know. Where is my, my phone is over there making all kinds of noise, too. I'm a hot mess today. That, getting back to the shadow smoking, I, I, I think it's good um, at any level of a cigar smoker, um, especially, you know, like you said, you know, if it's the winter time mm -hmm. and you're going to sit around, it's a cold Saturday, 23 degrees, you're not going outside unless no. you're skiing, right? right? But uh, other than that, you know, it, it, it's good to, to sit down with, 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 with a couple people, have the same stick, talk about it, you know, because it, it's amazing how you can put three people on the same stick and, and they can, the first notes that they get on their palate will be totally different. Well, that's and, true. Very you know, true. Uh, very and true. it's the same thing, you know, it, it, it's, it's perception, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, you know, if, if we all saw uh, a, um, something happening across the street, 
something else would grab us all at a different time and, 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 and kind of how we would articulate that. So it's, it's uh, interesting that, that, you know, that was the first thing that stuck out in your head. Like, you know, hey, I'm a shadow smoker. You know, I like to, you know. I, it's I like part of the fun. When we get together with friends, it compare contrast and uh, you really get to air it out. And, uh, you do. You know. I'm also a shadow drinker. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. What wow, a drink, by the way. Do you golf? Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you golf? Do I do golf. Yes, oh, I this do. could be like a friend of mine. <laughs> oh, right? Yeah. Uh, right? <laughs> I do. Mike's engaged to a shadow. <laughs> uh, We're in love. You want to talk a little bit about business? What, what, what's we the, can talk what, business. What, what, what do you guys do? Like I said, it's, uh, it's trailer trailers. sales and yeah, service. I know it's trailers <laughs> and sale, uh, sales, but, you know, I'd like a little more than, than a sentence, you know? Well, it's, uh, it, it's been uh, in operation for well over 20 years. Jay actually founded the business, and uh, it's actually a great story. We have a beautiful property. Joe, you've been there. Uh, it's a great amazing. place to enjoy a, a cigar, by the way. Uh, you know, we have a 10-stall barn. It's seven acres of beautiful farmland. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple paddocks uh, that it integrates with, you know, the, the landscapers and the, the horse trailer clientele that we have. So Partnerships um, and ship throughout the country, which is amazing. Throughout the country. So wait, do you work with people to get horses to and from uh, the derby or? Um, maybe. 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 Uh, we, we may have sold a few uh, derby trailers out there. You know, oh, I see. So you sell them to the people that transport them local. Correct. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. the equine industry. And, uh, you know, if anybody out there is in the equine industry, if, if you did business with us, it's it's unique because uh, it, it's it's a business where if, if you brought your trailer in for service, you have how many acres of uh, trail riding back there? Well, we got close to, um, on the farm is 51, and then we abut close to 650 acres. So, so you can bring your horse. Land. And it, it's in Rhode Island? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. And uh, you founded the business in Rhode Island? I, I did. How many years ago? That was in 1994. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. But he's had the property since the 70s? I've had the property since the 70s, yeah. yeah. Much it's, cheaper back then than it Well, is. it sure was. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's an amazing business story. Business was easier back then. Yes, it was. <laughs> I don't know if it was easier. I, I, yeah. I heard the struggle. I don't know if it was easier, but... Yeah, it, was, uh, it was tough. Yeah, how, how we came of the property and, and, and how we got to where we are today, it's... If you had a few minutes, it's a pretty amazing story. Yeah. I originally was in the saddle horse business, you know, buying and selling saddle horses to people. Maybe you'd want a horse for your daughter or your son or whatever. Right. And I eventually graduated and got into the thoroughbred breeding business. I bought and sold thoroughbred breeding stock all over the world. And we shipped it off the farm that we're at. And I had this notion that uh, to get somebody to come to Rhode Island to buy a breeding mare or a stallion, was a, it was a quite a feat. You, mm. you know, the blood only carries people so far. So I had this vision to make the farm uh, something like you could get on the farm and you would think you were in Kentucky. All the fences are four rail. They're black, just like they, were, they would be in, in Kentucky. Mm. And uh, we've sold horses uh, all over the world there, all over the world. We've had a horse that was born in the barn that won the Arkansas Derby and finished seventh in the Kentucky Derby back down. That was in 1992. Wow. Yeah. So we've had a lot of fun there. We've had sons of Secretariat. We've had sons of Northern Dancer, uh, Alley Dars, and uh, the list goes on. Mr. Prospectors. We've had them all right there at the farm. So it's a pretty intriguing story. So you got lots of land. You get an excavator on site? Yeah, I and sure firearms? do. Firearms? That's and firearms. Right. So you don't mess with Jay? No, you don't. Mess with Jay. <laughs> get all the things That's you need right. make it just yeah. disappear. Yeah. <laughs> he actually found that property by yeah. a complete happenstance. It's, it's an amazing story. Yeah, so we have seven yeah. acres yeah. for the business. And you said and, 51 uh, for the... Well, it was originally 98. No, 100, 110 acres it was originally. And, uh, That's what like most of the state of Rhode Island. Right. Right. It's a good yeah. portion of it, yeah. You've owned all of Gloucester at one yes, point. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and I was keeping horses at a barn up the street, and at the time, uh, probably most of you folks at this table wouldn't remember, but Narragansett Racetrack had closed. And uh, I was driving up to my barn, and I got a flat tire in front of this piece of property, and not realizing it was for sale. It was a hot, sunny day. I was a smoker at the time. I said, the hell with it. I'm going to just sit out here and there you go. under this, this big pine tree dig and, in. and dig yeah. in and have a smoke, and I'll change that tire in a few. Mm. Well, um, I always tell people I was a smoker because I ended up sitting down, and when I did, my hand slipped on some pine needles, and I cleaned off the pine needles, and there was a for sale sign. <laughs> so I jotted the number down, and I started walking through the woods, and I realized that the land was pretty level because being a smoker, I would certainly know if I'm going uphill, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> So that being said, um, I ended up calling, buying the property, and uh, Narragansett closed at the same time. I took seven barns down at Narragansett, and I re 
to call the wood back to Gloucester, Rhode Island, and we built, uh, uh, a, well, at one time it was an 18-stall barn on one side and a 10-stall barn on the other with a uh, apartment, and we used all used, all used wood. So I was recycling back in there. Uh, mm. Before it was a <laughs> good time. Yeah. Before it was a thing. The dog track, that's over. No, um, racetrack. It was race horses. Track. That was that was in uh, Pawtucket, right? Pawtucket, yep. that is yep. correct. That was a flea market. I remember going there as a yeah. little kid. Yeah. I remember yeah. going there yeah. as a little kid with, with, with my grandfather and yeah. smoking cigars. It's the glory days when you can smoke cigars wherever you go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You know, right. and, and going there and, and, yeah. and see, seeing the, the horses and, and yeah. whatnot. It's crazy. Yeah. So what happened was, is you know, I, I got involved with the Thoroughbreds, and I was doing very well and, um, you know, flying all over the world with them. And uh, I got sick in 1994. I had to take some time off. <clears throat> and um, it was a three-year period where I couldn't work. So a friend of mine, Carl Turnbow from Oklahoma, who was in the thoroughbred business, said to me, why don't you start selling some horse trailers? You, you must be bored. I said, I'm going out of my mind, but I, I don't want to sell horse trailers. He said, Jay, you'd be good at it. I said, well, you want to send them, I'll sell them. So he was a manufacturer. So he sent me three, and that's how Tabillion Trailers wow. came to life. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it is. It's an interesting story. Great story. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you do? Day-to-day -day operations. Well, I'm a partner there now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm I'm basically handling the day-to-day -day operations. Um, I I met Jay about a year and a half ago now. Uh, actually, drove through there as a customer, mm -hmm. and uh, got very friendly with Jay. And actually, over a, a couple cigars, yeah. we, we worked out a deal. Beautiful and thing. We formed a partnership. So. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. How is. how like cigars can really be. It is. A, That's a, right. A great unifier. Yeah, we compensated the deal right over uh, over some cigars and, and some Johnny Blue. Blue. And some Johnny and Johnny some Walker Johnny Blue. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> Blue. <laughs> he bought. Yeah. He bought. No, no, they brought. <laughs> I didn't buy. I didn't buy. They brought me blue, not black. There you go. Good guy. That means yes. they meant business. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Oh, yeah. yeah. As soon as I saw that bottle come out in blue, I says, right. Uh, we, we're we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, right. do some business. So you're looking forward to the derby? I am. Yeah. Are you guys going? Are you guys going to the derby or? Not I'm sure you'd be at it if you're going. Not this year. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't it start? Yeah. Is it Saturday. Start the first first uh, Saturday in May. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, you'd have yeah. time, yeah. but you're not going this year. Not this year. I'm gonna have a horse there when I go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mike's uh, <laughs> in the works. Mike's getting really bit by the thoroughbred racing bug. I'll tell you. I mean, I've I seen have. people have uh, get enthusiastic about it, but this guy is over over the top. Over the top. He's well, good. You said it best. Yeah. What's that? I mean, when you have. But when, when you have, inside of you, when you got horse in your blood, you, really feel you it. can't help it. You yes, know, and, you can't. And, uh, and I, I can tell you, um, I was telling Mike a story once. I was at Belmont Racetrack, and I was there buying some horses at an auction. And I can remember walking under the grandstand, and it was a hot summer June day. And uh, I can remember the hair all of a sudden started, you know, standing up on my arms and stuff. And I said, what the heck is that? It's, I'm not cold, you know. And I stopped and thought about it for a minute, and I came to the conclusion in my mind, I realized I was standing where the greatest horses in the world would walk down. Mm. Mm. So when you do have, have, have something like that happen to you, you got a horse in your blood. Mm -hmm. Aha moment. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, I felt it. it. Is. Well, one, of the, <laughs> you're, one of the scenes uh, from a TV show that sticks out of my mind that really goes along with, you guys are thinking, you know what I'm going to say already, is when Tony Soprano yeah. sitting in the horse barn. Oh, right? yeah. oh, I yeah. think his horse was sick. Was yeah. that the scene where his yeah. horse was sick? Well, he's lame. He had, he had, a, he had a leg problem. I yeah, think. and he sits there and he you know, lights up a cigar and starts smoking a cigar in, yeah. the, in the barn you know, with his horse and stuff. That was just one of the... Uh, great scenes from that show that really highlighted both what we're talking about, the, the horse thing, and uh, yeah. cigars as well. So. I always say to people, <clears throat> you know, uh, being uh, where I started in the horse business, um, I never realized where this would take me. You know, you, you start, you do something in life, and you say, okay, I'm going to just try to maximize this and see if I can make a go of it. And I got a saying that, and it's very true for me anyways, is that you never know where a horse can take you. And mentally and physically, it's taken me around this world two or three times. And I've met sheiks, English lords. I mean, I've met them all. And I always say to myself, I'm a little guy from North Providence, Rhode Island. Who the hell would ever think that I would have these opportunities? So right. it's amazing. It's, a great, uh, it was a, it's been a great adventure for me and still continues to be. Life is wonderful. I enjoy the location. I, I'm there from uh, time to time whenever I can and enjoying the horses, tee up a couple cigars, nice Absolutely. beverage. And... Uh, like, yep. Great place to kick back. It, it is. is. It Don't is. be shy. Buy a trailer. Yeah. Yeah, you can Just buy because. A, you can buy a trailer and we can put some seats in there and put some windows in it. You, you can turn it into a humidor. Crazier things have happened. Mobile Stuggy Geek Studio. <laughs> That's there you right. Go. There yeah. you go. You could, they could take it anywhere, right? There, there you, you go. go. There you go. Well, I heard there are, there are plans for a small humidor and a little uh, smoke room over there. Still it, in the works? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. So where you guys in have the, 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 the farm and stuff, um, the land, you're yeah. in your, do you have offices there? Yeah, or? that's what right. there is. There's a main showroom with uh, three big garage. Mm -hmm. There's a, a ten stall barn. And there is a, a small... Uh, Perfect little outbuilding right there. Right yeah, uh, international headquarters. <laughs> yeah, that's, works. that's uh, <laughs> that little outbuilding. That's a funny story. That came from a funeral home. That's where they used to park the flower car. And they were tearing it, going to tear it down. And I stopped uh, Mr. Winfield and I said, hey, what are you doing with that building? He said, we're going to tear it down. I says, oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, if I, if I can move it, can I have it? He says, you sure can. So we unbolted it and jacked it up, put it on a low bed trail and brought it up to the farm. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the ultimate, the ultimate yeah. man cave and the, the most beautiful of settings. It is. Yeah, I, I can't wait. It's really nice. We had a cigar dinner. I was running for Senate at one time, and I don't mean to get politicians here, but... Uh, oh, no, please yeah, do. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, we had a beautiful cigar dinner up at the farm, and uh, I'll tell you, everybody raved about it. It was, you know, like at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, and we had tents up and had it catered. Uh, it was beautiful, it was, and everybody commented, let's have another one of these, you know? Right, so, but. so you guys really work cigars into your... Uh -huh. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Every day. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. And, you know, it's, uh, we, we deal with a lot of different manufacturers. So uh, I, I know you travel from time to time. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I've been on the road and, and kind of meeting all our manufacturers. And I've been to uh, Texas, Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, it's the first thing I do. Find the cigar shop. First thing. Always. Where's your favorite cigar shop outside of Rhode Island? <laughs> I'll tell you, there was a, there was a great one in, in uh, it was right outside of Dallas that mm -hmm. I've been to. It was huge. Awesome um, cigar shops in Texas. Yeah. Oh, it's it's, yeah. it's it's amazing, and uh, I mean the, the the people you can't find better people than when you go to a cigar shop. I mean everybody, uh, you know, they say the brothers and the sisters of the leaf, and it's true. It, it's it's brotherhood. Yep. It's very welcoming, and and they'll they'll tell you a lot too. So whether you're there for a day or whether you're there for five days, they tell you where to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, it, it you know I, I'm I'm going to be heading out to uh, I believe South Carolina in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And Joe, you've been to South Carolina, right? Uh, not yet. It's on the. You uh, haven't? I thought you were in South Carolina. I was going to ask for a recommendation from you, but. We'll get Where in South Carolina are you going? No. Where? Uh, I believe Asheville. Okay. I'm, I haven't even seen nice my itinerary Asheville. yet. But. Okay. Yeah. Nice area. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful area. I don't know what cigar shops are there. I'd, I'd have to look. How close is that to Hilton Head? That's quite um, a ways. Yeah. Yeah. Close enough. It's got to reach <laughs> out to uh, Will Cooper on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah. No, and oh, there's a cool little cigar shop in, in Hilton Head. And when I noticed yeah. outside of Rhode Island, when you deal with. with uh, there, it's it's wine and cigars. Mm -hmm, There's a mm -hmm. place in Maine, yeah, over in Portland, Maine, where you know I like wine as much as I like cigars, and I like craft beer as much as I like cigars, oh, and, yeah. and and it's one of those things where again. Even if you're not a cigar smoker and you sit down with a glass of wine with someone, there's a common denominator there where it's equalizer. You know? Yeah, really. I <laughs> was in Charleston, South Carolina, and, yep. they, and uh, you know, you talk about uh, most cigar stores in Charleston uh, also sell liquor. Mm -hmm. So you can sit and have your favorite beverage as well. Right. And uh, there was a beautiful restaurant next door, so it was kind of nice. Uh, went to uh, High Cotton was the name of the restaurant. Had a beautiful meal. Walked next door, sat outside, and... Had some great cigars and it was great, better than you. Right nothing, there. nothing was better than that. That oh, was yeah. great. It's great. So uh, you're right. I think you meet a lot of nice people in cigar stores. Yeah, and absolutely. Great, great people. Great people. And absolutely. They're all will, always willing to give you a great recommendation on a cigar. So when you go to a new cigar shop, like how do you determine which cigar to smoke? Do you like ask the retailer? Do you let them guide you? Mm -hmm. when I do. You, when you visit. Yeah. Very inquisitive. Yeah. Yep. I go with recommendations. So. And that's really how you get exposed to new, new cigars. Mm -hmm. That or what they're trying to sell. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's true. It's true. It's not always yeah. a, you know a win. Although what they're trying to sell may be something you like. No, I, I've I've never really encountered a, a a bad recommendation. But yeah, you know I, I always on the back of my mind wonder. <laughs> yeah, Plus outside the state, outside New England, too. Right, you know, right. So yeah, it's different nice. markets. So you're going to be exposed to. Are they uh, dusting this product? one off? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, it might be good. I mean, cigars age really well, so yeah, yeah. It might be a good thing if it's something mm -hmm. old they're trying to get rid of. I usually ask Touché. them, you know, what's your best seller? That's yeah. what I usually ask them. Yeah, smoke what other people are smoking exactly. in the shop in that so. area, and yeah. you know, we we get to try them. It's amazing how it's territorial it geographically. Because I go into a cigar shop outside of Rhode Island, wherever I go, and I'll strike up a conversation about business or commerce or whatever. And and you know, it, it's it's amazing how some cigars do very well in specific regions, mm -hmm. and, and others don't. And yeah, you know. Well, it's, again, it's probably what one is pushing all the time, too. You know, if that's, that's the only type of cigar you could get at that store, that's what you buy. But, mm -hmm. you know, like you say, when you venture out and you ask, you know, you can make recommendations to the owner of the store that you go to all the time, and usually they'll get a box. Of, mm -hmm. I, I find, I, you know, I found them to be very 
accommodating that way. And uh, you take New World, uh, one of the cigar stores that I, I do business with, never even heard of him. So I mentioned him to him, and now he's got New Worlds there, and he's going through them like water. He says, Something to be said, certainly, to take that time and really peruse uh, the humanoid, really you know, yeah. get a feel for it. That's half the fun. It is. Get in there, see what's new, and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. No, it's see what the, uh, the weapon of choice is for the day, maybe right. a couple. That's right. That's right. So, do you guys make box box purchases with cigars? And if so, like, what are your most recent some of the box purchases? The most recent I've made was the uh, Fuente and Yeho. Yeah. Mm. There you go. Talking J- excellent Joe's language here. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic cigar. I'll yeah. give Very you some good. advice when you're traveling. Yeah. Take a couple extra. You can barter. Oh. Ah. <laughs> especially, especially if I mean it's t- it's it's really a gamble. But I've gone into some cigar shops like around here, yeah. where we have a hot cigar, whatever yeah. it is, it's the flavor of the month. And I've taken a couple extra. It's amazing when when you go down south and they either never heard of them, yeah. And if you meet with the owner, uh, I've walked in with with some some hard to get cigars, and uh, I have a friend in the industry who chases those types of cigars. Sure. So I walk in with a couple of them, and he's like, "How many of those you got? Five. And he'd be like, "I'll give you ten or whatever you want in my humidor. Wow. If I have all five, and, sure. and, and 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 I'm like, "Okay, great." So I'm in my head, I'm going, <laughs> and I'm going with this Patron. <laughs> I got Patron. I'm going yep. with Patron. It's <laughs> kind of like whenever Paul calls in sick, and I go through yeah. his humidor, I go for the good stuff. Of course, <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Why not? Be for the buttery ones. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a tip for the next time I come here, too, then, huh? <laughs> yes. You can bought a, you can bought a My only rule no. is if I only have one of them, mm-hmm. that usually means it's You're one. You're cutting in half? I have no. to smoke. <laughs> you split it? For me. No. <laughs> Anything else is pretty much fair game. No? But, you know, right. cost, age doesn't matter. But if I only have one... That hands off. Yeah. And, 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 and again, it's a great way to engage in conversation. It is. And then find out because they're like, you know, well, where did you get these? Like, these are available all mm-hmm. the time. And if they don't either, if, if, if their rep never got to them yet or whichever, or if yeah. they never heard of it, mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're in like Flynn. Catch yeah. them sleeping. Oh, it's a $100 stick. Yeah, no, no, I'll no, take 50. No, no. You're not passing. You're not, yeah. You know. Where we are with the uh, Rose Sharon Paul. I, you know, I was just thinking how much I'm enjoying this cigar. Real men rock pink. Just throw it <laughs> and I'm not. I'm, and I'm not just saying that. I smoke a lot of Connecticut's, and I'm very <sighs> critical of uh, Connecticut's. But I'm smoking this, going, wow! I got. I got to get more of these and, and work this into my regular rotation. <laughs> it's really good, dude. It has a really great is. sweetness. I like the floral right. notes that it has. Absolutely. Some people don't, you know, don't really uh, enjoy the floral notes uh, as much. Um, I do. I think it's a great, um, a, a great note to have, especially in a Connecticut. Um, it plays well. This is it's really good. Is this available in different sizes? Yes. Smaller sizes? Or uh, is this the smallest that they, they make? Mm. Get, Hold uh, on. I know the oh. answer to that question. I didn't do any research on this cigar. No this, worries, uh, man. It's uh, the small size they <laughs> make, uh, Joe Hollywood, is a 5.5 by 54 mm. uh, Robusto. Nope, sorry. They make a 5.5 by 50 Bellicoso. And a 5.5 by 54 is their Robusto. 6 by 52 Toro. Six and a half by sixty Gordo, a Lancero at six and a half by forty, which is a slightly larger ring gauge Lancero, which tends to be very good. Right. Uh, and the two Perfectos are uh, five by fifty eight and six by fifty six. Hmm. It's become my uh, fat. You know, quickly, it's become my uh, favorite in the line. Can't, um, can't get enough. It's is, is different the Toro, from the other. The Toro is your favorite size, Rain Man. Ro- Rose Sharon across the board, but I I like the Toro. Gotcha. And, and this is a limited release, right? No, this is uh, regular. Oh, I thought it, I read somewhere it was. Gonna this be. is uh, one of the one of the two uh, newest offerings, uh, Jacob's Ladder, which uh, I believe should be out around the IPCPR, and uh, the Rose of Sharon is about a month month into uh, some of the the longer standing shops uh, in Texas Stronghold in particular. They uh, they get to sample it first, get uh, get first dibs, but. We're uh, moving up. I got gotcha. you. Yep, I got gotcha. you. Moving on up. Of course, mine's unraveling. We'll again. tell you. You get you. You get a um, a really good floral note. Um, it's, That's at the forefront for sure. It, yeah, it's very, it's very subtle mm-hmm. compared to the other stuff that I've tried from Southern Draw. Southern Draw has has had a little bit of a strongness to it. You know, it's, yeah, especially get, for the beginner smoker. I give a, a medium plus, but this is yeah. But this yeah, isn't like well. smoking air or anything either. Like, no, no, no. And like I've said before, Connecticut, sometimes like mm-hmm. it's like smoking just air, you know. And then other times the blend goes the completely opposite way, and 
the binder and filler just overpower any nuances that are in the wrapper and yes. you get spice right. and pepper as a component and the, just the strength meter, mm -hmm. the bold flavors in the filler, I think just like overpower those awesome, sweet and nuanced, creamy flavors that are in the wrapper. This falls somewhere in between, which has the rankings of being in my regular <laughs> smoking rotation. You're the ultimate Connecticut guy, so yeah, you, you'd absolutely uh, weigh in on this for sure. <laughs> I haven't been un until I tried this. I'm, it's quite enjoyable. It's my second one. And are you smoking uh, a different size? No. Or am I? Oh, you are. It looks like a different size. Yeah, that's a different size. That's smaller. Yeah. You got a, a different yet mightier. Size. <laughs> smaller yet mightier. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'll pack Interested in China in the smaller size. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, th I'm, I, th I think it would be interesting to, to definitely try uh, a couple more. See it's, if I can work on that. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, Game day smokes for the Derby. Where are we at, boys? Well, what, what's the lineup? What goes into the uh, the prep for the day? You know, obviously you prefer to be there, but if you can't, what's your, uh, your normal itinerary and uh, what goes into it? Well, I, no, that's half the fun altogether. And you, know? you wear a hat. Uh, oh, uh, absolutely. You gotta, yeah. Well, if I'm there, I'd wear a hat, sure. But if I'm home, heels? I, I, I usually wear hats, but not all the time. But uh, like, you what know, length uh, is the skirt? Is it like the, below well, the knee, <laughs> above the knee? Well, when I was younger, <laughs> when I was younger, uh, you know, it was probably about uh, six and a half inches from my thigh. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah. But now that I'm older, it's you got, you got about six and a half inches over my ankle. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, no, it's uh, Derby prep day. I mean, I've I've been to the derbies and. Uh, been fortunate enough again to uh, know a lot of trainers and be on the back side of the racetrack prior to the derby the day before and I always find that uh, you know those are the days where mostly all the work goes in uh, you find you know trainers all over these horses and just trying to get them as comfortable as possible that's a, see that's a different uh, totally different appreciation you guys yeah. are at the ground level right yeah. there yeah and, and you know the uh, the ins and the outs and it's amazing. It really is. There's a lot of lot awesome. that, lot that goes into that uh, two minutes of racing. Right. Uh, and um, you know, there's a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears that go into it. And uh, I've been there. I've been on the backside. I've watched it, uh, and uh, it's 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 an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. And to watch these horses, uh, knowing uh, the great ones uh, have a tendency to have an air about them. They just know that they're a champion. They know they're mm -hmm. good. And uh, it's again, it's uh, it's an amazing thing. I've been about the backside with. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Dean Wayne Lucas. Uh, he's won many derbies in Belmonts, and uh, Bob Baffert, I know Bob well. Uh, I've been on the backside with him, and uh, so, you know, I'm fortunate to be able to know these people to get the availability to see what the public doesn't see, mm -hmm. and uh, nice. it's, it's, been, it's been awesome. Do so you guys get together and have cigars and watch the derby? Is that We do, but you're, you're, you're missing out on, on that day, I mean, that first weekend of May with what's going on, not to, to be a fan of horse racing, but just to be a fan of sports, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have NHL playoffs going on. You have NBA playoffs going on. Uh, a full derby card. And, and, you know, if you're a boxing fan. It's it, the greatest time in sports right now. It's, it's, it's a day that I oh, hope. Yeah. Canelo. Oh, you got Canelo. It used to be the Mayweather day, in. but yep. you have Canelo yeah. <laughs> taking over. And, uh, you know, that for myself, you know, I, I'll probably start off with, uh, that, that Avo has been in my rotation, nice. so I'll start off with an Avo, but I got that Padron 64 waiting for the end of the day. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, we'll we'll nice. see how the day pans out, but. Nice. Going to work, uh, work in a uh, Pep and Blue at, uh, at some point? That, that's midday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it all mapped Canelo out. and Alvare uh, Chavez Jr., right? It what, is, What do yes. you think? I mean, it's it's the Canelo show. Yeah, it's I mean, I, I, I can't see. Yeah. I was at a cigar shop yesterday, and the promos are on, and they're like, Jojo, what do you think? And I says, it's, it's Canelo. And they're like, what? You know, it, it's, it's Chavez's kid. I go, that's okay. It's not Chavez. Right. You know what and, I mean? And they found and, a name, and they found someone to and, fight him, but and it, it's if you the look Canelo. At, and from a boxing perspective, if you look at Canelo's losses, uh -huh. they're not from slouches. No, definitely mm -hmm. not. Which definitely something not. to say about, I don't want to say failure. Mm -hmm. But there's something to say about ring experience and oh, all of without that. a doubt, and, and you know, and anything in life. Yeah. Right. So, are you a, a full boat like New England sports fans? I'm the complete opposite, unfortunately. Uh, okay, I know you're a big Patriots fan, but I am. <laughs> Cowboys. Okay, give us a name. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I'm a Cincinnati Bengals fan. Oh, well. uh, <laughs> I mean, full stable of criminals over there. <laughs> <laughs> at least it's not the Browns. So right. I mean, right? you got that going for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With this yeah. up, uh, this last draft here, we definitely can win in a fight. You know, I don't yeah. know about on the field. <laughs> <laughs> We're fighting yeah. girls. We're. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. I'm a. I'm and you're a Cowboys fan. I've been a Dallas Cowboy fan since I've been since I can remember. Yeah. Well, there uh, you go. Yeah, yeah. 
great, great uh, organization, I think. Yeah. 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 Second, uh, no, Cowboys is, I read somewhere from a business perspective, highest revenue generating oh. team. I believe it. Um, yeah. There. I believe it. The, most the, most, I know the, most the, Super Bowls? Where are they ranked in the yeah. most Super Bowls, right? <laughs> Down there in Jerry World? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I think, no, still, I think the Patriots just... Uh, no, no, I don't, no, 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 you're right. There are teams that won, that won more than the... Yeah. My son, who's yeah. going to be nine, yeah. like knows this stuff. we got to bring Braden on the show. He knows yeah. this stuff like, dude, off the top of his right. head. Right. He can be <laughs> like, nope, they won this many Super Bowls. And <laughs> What's his go-to smoke? Mm. <laughs> nah, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Pretty soon. He's going to be the... Uh, the bubblegum cigars? No, he does. He likes the bubblegum... Uh, cigars, and he likes. Um, I call them. I make kid old fashions. Yes, because all the kids, <laughs> nice. all the kids are like, you're making all these special drinks. I'm like, you want one? And they kind of <laughs> look at me. I'm like, I'm not gonna put any like adult beverages in it, but I make like a kid old fashioned. And they're like, yeah, they love them too. How do you make a kid old fashioned? What do you use? Uh, just a lot of soda water, yeah. sugar, a couple more of the maraschino cherries. Yeah, muddle the I orange. Uh, you muddle the orange. Yeah, yeah. in there, like no bitters and yeah. no. Bourbon, basically. Yeah, and sometimes sure. if I have fruit juice or whatever, you put a little splash of that and in there. The kids too. love it. The kids love it. They think it's great. You're setting them up for success. There you go. Preg- pregnant women, kids. Yeah. I, got, <laughs> I got you covered. <laughs> I got you covered. <laughs> got you covered. That's great. That's great. Yeah, Saturday's going to be a good sports day. It's it the greatest yeah. sports day. It's, 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 it's the day that I look forward to. I mean, uh, I'm eager with anticipation. Uh, the, the, the full derby card and, and derby day, I mean, there, there's just nothing like it. I don't know if you guys have ever. Um, had the luxury of, of, of going to a live race, but there's just uh, nothing in the world that, that, that beats it. So you can't, you, the appreciation of, of, uh, of a day at the races, it's a, just a great way to kill a day. The passion's oozing out of your headset right now. Well, the passion. Uh, it I'm kind feeling of, it. I'm feeling yeah. the goosebumps. Uh, goosebumps, yeah. It kind of runs, uh, uh, I would say, uh, very um, evenly through the, the whole industry. You could have a horse that's running for. Thirty-five hundred dollars, and if that horse wins a race, the high is just is. I mean, people get just excited about a thirty-five hundred dollar win as they would a right. two hundred fifty thousand right. dollar win. Mm-hmm. So it's a great sport. So really now is. I have the stats now because I don't have Braden okay. here. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, I thought it most was Super Bowl wins at six. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the three are tied at five: the Patriots, right. San Francisco 49ers, and, and Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys. I was right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where are you gentlemen at with the? Uh, the, uh, I don't see the the bet. Hold on, I got to expand. The bagels the keep going. The yeah. bagels they, keep they, they did win the bagels one. Keep they going. Did, they yeah. did win one. Yeah. They're in the league. I yeah. promise. Yeah. They're in there. <laughs> they're yeah. in there somewhere. I'm curious about the research for the Derby and uh, any any picks, any info you want to throw out there. Well, uh, the listeners at home, anybody that's uh, playing along, that eagerly listening right now. It's it's one of the the widest spread fields really that you've seen mm-hmm. in, in many years. Um, I mean, there's no clear cut favorite. Uh, you know some. Some of the, the, the top horses that you hear, Classic Empire, uh, Always Dreaming, they have great pedigrees. They, they've won some pretty uh, significant races, but uh, there's no clear race. cut. It, it, it's, a, it's a better's dream and a handicapper's nightmare. Uh, there you go. It, yeah, for sure, especially, the, especially that one race. That it's, one race yep. is, is wide open. It is. It really is. And uh, you're, you're probably going to see a favorite somewhere around the 5-1 the to one to 6-1. to one. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of unheard of, but it's, it's a 20-horse field. Uh, it's the 143rd running. It's the first leg of the Triple Crown. It's the greatest three-year-olds. It's the greatest two minutes in sports. The run for the roses. I mean, it's... Rose of Sharon. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Try to tie it all together. Today. There you go. There you go. But there's, uh, there's a lot of money to be made out there if, if you're a gambler, so... Yeah. And, you know, it can happen to, uh, to anybody. What I always liked about the big races, especially the Derby, uh, you can get a guy that's been training a horse in Arkansas, never been to Kentucky in his life, and put a horse on a van, go to the Kentucky Derby, and <laughs> next thing you know, he's, he's famous, you know. Right. So it's, uh, it's a business that can change. Why well, I always say horses change people's lives. They really do. In, in that game, anyways. Yeah. I'm sure. Just the lead up and the build up. And, and yeah. you know, if you're sitting there as a casual fan watching at home, I, I, you really hear the backstory of all these trainers and what it took to get there. And, right. And the years of preparation and, and the years of honing their craft. And, uh, you know, the, you're, you're forgetting the main, the main part of the day. I mean, those horses are athletes. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't, you don't realize it, but they're athletes. And, and just like Jay was saying, I mean, they could be racing for a, th- uh, $3,000, uh, uh, claiming price. or they're ra- racing for 2 million at the Kentucky Derby and they don't know, they just do their job. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. So. You seem to really paint that picture on TV too, whether, you know, you're on location somewhere or 
propped up on the couch, you, you really have like a vested interest you do. In, in the race, in particular you horses, and you, you appreciate that backstory. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but I, I do enjoy the you normally uh, don't. the event. <laughs> <laughs> I tell my kids that all the time. Do your job, right? Yeah, my, that's my it. son's all in the football, that's and that, he, like, that like resonates with him. It right? does, yeah. 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 And that's a good saying. I, I, I like that saying a lot. That was a Belichick. That was Belichick. Yeah, yeah, that's Belichick's yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, horses are the same thing. Like Mike said, you know, they, they, don't, know that they don't know if they're running in the Derby. They don't know if they're running the, when Suffolk Downs was running or right. Rockingham mm -hmm. Park. They know they're there to do a job and do it to the best of their ability. And, uh, you know, uh, the only thing that gets in the way of them sometimes is people. Right? Mm. That's with a lot of things. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Sometimes we get in the way. It's a very romantic aspect of, of uh, horse racing as well. And, yes. you know, it's, it's very similar to, to what we're all doing here. You know, it's a very social aspect. Mm -hmm. Being at the races, being around this table here, it, it, it brings people together. And, uh, you know, it's... it's That's a conversation piece. It is. Unfortunately, it's a dichotomy to, to what our society has become. Um, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's life is so rushed. Everything is instant gratification. Anything you need is at your fingertips. I mean, you got two, two laptops, computers here, yeah. you know, and, and nobody really steps back and, and, and takes a breath and, and enjoys the finer things in life. And, you know, that, that's what horse racing really lends to, and, and that's what we're doing here. And cigar smoking really lends to. So mm -hmm. they do. They, they do. Uh, boink, boink, boink. <laughs> I'm waiting. Well no played. tears? Well played. Not one, not one tear? That's, that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's a, it, it's it's a good point. You know, you do need to. I always mention that when we do the Stogies of the Week. Mm -hmm. And when I give a Stogie a high rating, it's because it, it stopped me in my tracks. Because we're, we're always going a mile a minute, doing, you know, we're always multitasking, trying to make the best effort that we can and whatever it is that, that we do. It is. And, and you know, again, it, 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 the horse racing brings so many different people from so many different cultures together. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be on the backside, uh, to appreciate it, you're like in a city within itself. Yep. It, it's maintained by the, the, the racetrack people. They have their own police department. I mean, so it's, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing thing to see. And if and you've uh, been yeah. live, you know, each race, it's a half hour in between each other. So... You know, there's a lot of downtime, but that's when you have that time to appreciate a fine cigar. Uh, you know, you, you can see the, the, the parade of the horses. You can see the jockeys mount, uh, the pageantry of it. I mean, it's... There you go. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a good way to, a little to spend involved. a day. So they let oh, you smoke at the Derby. They do. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah it's so at least they haven't taken that away, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> hey, they got it right in the South, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Uh, no, Canada, Canada more like. <laughs> Although uh, Louisville in general... Is not somewhat. They're like on the fence. Right. Um, so we have a, a, a. I'm in computer security is the other. My, my, actually, my primary business, and we have a conference that's been. Uh, it's like five or six years in Louisville, Kentucky, um, and I had been there for a different conference before. So it's one of the destinations if you're in computer security. You've mm -hmm. probably been there for a conference yeah. uh, at some time, and. They've got Fourth Street Live. Have you guys mm -hmm. been to Fourth Street mm -hmm. uh, Live? Mm -hmm. It's uh, basically like a street everyone walks down. There's a bunch of bars, restaurants, right. clubs, that kind of thing, and yeah. like the outdoor smoking's kind of mixed. Now, Maker's Mark has a restaurant mm -hmm. right on Fourth Street Live, and right on Fourth Street, and they have a humidor, and you can get all kinds of bourbon drinks and sit outside, and they let you smoke, no problems there. The, all the restaurants. Like, they actually have signs, like, no cigar smoking mm, or whatever. Mm. And I have to, and we still do. So the, way, the reason I say they're on the fence is listeners of the show have heard me talk about this before. You have to negotiate with your server because your server wants their tip. Sure. Right? Sure. <laughs> sure. So if you ask them, like, hey, is it all right if I light up a cigar out here? And usually they're like, you know, as long as no one else is complaining. And I must have done that three years in a row. And, dude, no one complains. Just to speak to the openness of sure. the no, smoking. Nobody will. The, yeah, no one complains. Everyone's no one like, will. Nobody, nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, again, you know, after a nice meal, of course, mm -hmm. there's nothing like sitting down, outside. relaxing yeah. outside. Tail made. Oh, and yeah. and uh, having, a, having a nice nice cigar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, good. I um, got a, I, 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 go if, ahead, if you have time, I've got a great story. And I, yes. I, maybe I should. One, last, one last story, then we're going to go to a different segment. You can okay. tell more stories well, later. No, Oh, well, okay. Well, I was going to tell him the story. It's about a phenomenal story. I'd yeah. love to hear it again. Yeah. Sure. And no call to post. We didn't hear it at the right. beginning of the show? No? I asked. I think they get jammed <laughs> up back there. They do a phenomenal job. Well, anyways, um, there was this uh, gentleman that was a trainer up in Boston, and his name was Carlos. And Carlos was from Puerto Rico. 
In Carlos spoke. I know a Carlos in Puerto Rico. There you go. Probably a <laughs> few of them. Right. Different person. <laughs> right. Well, Carlos, um, he was a very colorful guy on the backside of the racetrack. And again, uh, every horse he had was a champion. Well, one day um, the SPCA came in and they arrested Carlos because they said that he was cruel to a racehorse. And the reason they said he was cruel is because he raced him seven, uh, seven days in a row. But the horse won five out of the seven days. So they said that's definitely against the rules and regulations of doing that to a horse. So the state of Massachusetts SPCA took him to court. And he gets to court and the judge asked him, you know, Carlos, how do you plead your case? And he says, you know, I'll use his accent. He says, I plead not guilty, Your Honor. And the judge says, well, how could you possibly plead not guilty? You ran this horse seven days in a row. Most trainers will race a horse once every 10 days. I mean, that's got to be hard and cruel on that animal. And he says, well, Your Honor, if you've got a minute, I'll tell you a story. And he says, well, <laughs> sure, go ahead. <laughs> He says, Your Honor, he says, you know, before I came to court the two days ago, he says, I got my car, and I drove my car from Lexington, Massachusetts, to Boston. It was 17 and a half miles. And he says, you know, I was thinking, you got a statue of a guy named Paul Revere. Do you know Paul Revere? <laughs> the judge says, yeah. He says, you know, you got mad at me because I raced my horse one mile a day on a sandy, nice track. One mile, that's it. This guy, Paul Revere... Rode a horse from Lexington, beating him with a lantern <laughs> 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 on cobblestone streets. Sparks are flying underneath the horse's feet, yelling, the British are coming, the British are coming. And you say, I'm cruel to the animal? <laughs> judge says, the judge was on the floor. He didn't know what to say, right? right. right. You see his hand banging, banging, banging. <laughs> and needless to say, Carlos got off. <laughs> yeah. no. What were his last words? Huh? I forget what, what was it? Where's my statue? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. you should make a statue of me. I race a horse seven times, he wins five. Who does that, he says. <laughs> Plus, the horses love that stuff. Oh, style. You know God, I mean? yeah. You know. yeah. So that's a great story, anyway. Reminds me of, you know, you have a dog that just, you know, loves to play fetch, and you're just like, we've already done this yeah. for 25 minutes. The dogs keep going and going. You know, Keeps they, going. They like to yeah. do it. He had a horse that always finished second. We could never understand why mm -hmm. he could never get this horse to win. And we said, Carlos, you know, you've trained a lot of horses in your time. Why can't this horse win a race? He's fishing second. He's finishing third. Why can't you get him to win? This horse will never win. I said, why? Fifteen people own him. <laughs> he says, can you imagine the mess they'll be in the winner's circle? Fifteen people think they own this horse? Only one? <laughs> they'll be fighting and arguing and yelling. I can't have that, he says. <laughs> 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 so he's charging 15 different people think they own that horse by themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if he wins, where do they go? To the winner's circle. They go to the winner's circle. All of a sudden, I own him. No, I own him. I own him. No, I own him. So anyways, it was cool. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. All right, with that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about uh, some bourbon and rum cocktails. Stay tuned, don't go anywhere. <laughs> 